Are you stuck on what equipment you need to start live streaming as a musician or performer? Have you been pondering over audio interfaces and mixers and wondering what the difference is? Listen to me, I sound like an advert. Well, in this video, we're gonna break down exactly what you need to get up and running for live streaming. Hey folks, it's JP, let's get right into it. Just as the pandemic hit the UK, I brought out a video which was how to set yourself up for live streaming for musicians. And that video has got quite a lot of views, but with it, a lot of questions. What cables are you using? How do I plug my guitar into my iPhone? How are you wired up to your Mac? What mic is best? Can't I just use a mini jack? Why is my audio only coming out the left ear? So I've been doing some thinking and some digging, and today I'm gonna break down exactly what you need. And we're gonna put it all together in what I call the beginner's streaming bundle. What this is, is a list of all the gear to get your vocals, your guitars, your keyboards in to then live stream out to the world. Whether you're plugging it into an iPhone, an Android device, a PC, a Mac, it does not matter, this setup will work. Now I've tested some things out, I've even returned some stuff, so you don't have to go through that pain. And if you wanna learn how to get your equipment integrated into this bundle, then stick around. When it comes to technology, there's five main things out there in the world. The most popular one for musicians who want to record themselves is getting a device called an audio interface. This takes the input from microphones and instruments and converts it digitally for a computer into a digital audio workstation or door. Audio interfaces are made by so many different companies now and there's a range of them from one input to multi-track input at the highest quality you can get. Now while an audio interface is fantastic at doing this job, they're not that hot if you want to do live streaming. And here's the reason why. The audio is coming in on separate channels. For example, if I plug in a two channel audio interface like my Focusrite 2i2 back there into something like an iPhone with an adapter, channel one is left and channel two is right. That's perfect for recording onto something like GarageBand or Cubasis on your mobile device. But streaming services see these channels literally as left and right. So for an example, I plug my vocal into channel one and I plug my guitar into channel two. On a live stream, this is exactly how it will come out with the vocal coming out on the left ear and the guitar on the right ear. They are two mono signals and they are not mixed together. Don't get me wrong, this is what you want for a audio interface and for a DAW. Now on a computer for streaming, it's slightly different. You can use alternative software to reroute the audio. The computer can take those channels and merge them or mix them. Or in things like OBS, you can even tick a box to say that's a mono track and it'll come out of both the left and the right. But predominantly, audio interfaces were designed to take the raw sound of a device at the highest recording quality possible. They were never really designed designed for live streaming. So if you already have an audio interface, how can you fix this? This is where a traditional mixer comes in. It sits between the audio interface and the instruments and microphones, and it takes in all your mono signals like your microphones and guitars and your stereo feeds like effects and keyboards, and then mixes them together. But not only just mixes them, you can add things like compression, EQ, panning, and traditionally that would normally go out to a PA or a speaker, but instead what you're doing is you're sending the output of that to the audio interface, which is then connected to a phone or a computer or a tablet. Now this is a great option if you have a mixer and an audio interface. Just introduce them to one another with the right cables and they'll get on fine. Just set up as you normally would for a live gig, plug everything into your mixer, and then plug the outputs of that into the audio interface. Additionally, you'll know if you're getting good audio because you'll see it on a mixer. A lot of mixers have level meters, but you'll also see it from the audio interface because that'll show you how loud that is as well. If all you have is an audio interface, the great news is that mixers actually are really cheap. You can even get ones that have built-in effects, EQ and panning, and even compression. Something like this Behringer Zenix 1202FX has 12 inputs, built-in EQ and effects and comes in at 70 pounds. And that's the other part of this. How many inputs do you actually need? If you're a band, you're gonna need quite a few inputs so everyone can plug in. Unless, of course, you're all considering huddling around one microphone. But just for a second, think of the drummer. Even if you make up just the kick, the snare, and put two overheads over, that's four inputs just for the drummer. And bringing the production level up, you wanna make sure everyone is heard. But if you're like me, as a solo artist, I've got one guitar, I've got a microphone, and maybe plug in a keyboard, you may only need two, three, or four inputs. Write down what you have, or more importantly, what you need for a live stream, and figure out how many mics or XLR inputs you need, 
and how many jack inputs you need, whether they're going to be mono or stereo. Finally, figure out if you need effects or whether you've actually got them already. For me, example, I use the TC Helicon Voice Live Play Acoustic. I put my guitar and my microphone through that. It has effects both ambient and for changing my voice. These days there is tech available such as speakers, effects processors, amps, loop stations, and even PA equipment, which has USB somewhere on the device and can actually double up as an audio interface. Now this is something quite specific and you have to check with your manufacturer. But before you start using it like an audio interface, check whether you want to use it in that way. For example, my Voice Live Play Acoustic has a USB on the back and it can double up as an audio interface and I could plug it into my phone and start live streaming. Great, but the reason I don't use it in this way is it's not the last audio signal in the chain. I have that effects processor plugged into a looper and it's the looper that goes out to the PA. I also use other instruments that don't go through it. So if I was to do this, you wouldn't hear those instruments and you wouldn't hear the looping and that's the whole point of my performance base. In this scenario, the new speakers and amps that have a USB be built in which also doubles up as an audio interface is the best option as normally that's the last thing you plug into and you have the added advantage that you can hear yourself that's really important if you're doing stuff like looping or you want to hear the effects if you're playing on multi-effects processing but this doesn't help the likes of a band or a duo all plugging into the same speaker that you wouldn't normally use then you have the issue of trying to balance everyone together and you're kind of mixing on a speaker Another option is a USB microphone, and these are fantastic and have come really into their own in the past couple of years. Now I have a Rode NT-USB, and it also doubles up as a sound card. This is great, I can plug my headphones in and listen to what's going on, but at the same time use it as an audio interface. They're also really, really good for digital audio workstations. You can just plug it straight in, and even though they're USB mics, there's ones that are even coming out now that are as good as condenser mics. But the problem remains the same, it's one microphone. We're going back to that band that are huddling all around one microphone. Now the last option is the all bells and whistles option where you plug everything into a mixer and that mixer also has an audio interface built into it. This is what's known as a USB mixer because you can then plug that USB mixer into your phone, tablet or computer. You can hear the output from the mixer directly and you can start streaming that audio straight to your device. This also saves you time and money because you don't have to pick an audio interface and a mixer and marry them together, they're kind of already married together. But, and there is a but with this, but it's only a small one. A USB mixer will send out the stereo mix out to a speaker or PA, and it will send the same mix out through the USB to your device for streaming, whether that's a tablet, a phone, or a computer. But if you're also looking to use that mixer as a audio interface, a lot of the basic USB mixers send the signal out as just a stereo mix. So if you've got something like a five channel or eight channel or 10 channel, USB mixer, you need to be really careful because if you want to use it as a multi-track recorder, not all of them have this feature. Now, some USB mixers do specifically say they are multi-track audio interfaces for both in and out recording, things like the Zoom L8 or L12, and things like the Soundcraft Signature 12. They'll give you things like 10 or 12 outs via USB so you can multi-track record the entire band. These mixers, of course, are more expensive because of the added features that they bring and are normally bigger. So before you start jumping onto a website or Googling USB mixer, just think about whether you want that USB mixer to be a two-channel USB mixer or a multi-channel USB mixer, depending on your needs. So now I'm going to show you the list, which is the beginner's streaming bundle that I've put together. So it's no surprise that first off, is a USB mixer. Now there's loads of them out there, but I've chosen this. This is the Behringer Zenix 802 USB. The reason for this is this comes in at 49 pounds. It's under 50 pounds, it's really, really lightweight. And I think you're getting the most bang for your buck as it has eight inputs, which is fine for solo artists, most duos, and even a small band. Whilst also at the same time having three band EQ on all the tracks. You've got two XLR inputs, which if you want, could be at line input instead with independent gain control for the XLRs. You also get 48 volt phantom power so if you're using things like a condenser microphone that's going to need that power. Now as well as three band EQ on the XLR inputs what you're getting is this. This is a compressor built right into the mixer and you can adjust the amount of compression that's happening and this is fantastic for vocals certainly live or live streaming. And of course this baby is USB. 
It's a two channel out for USB, which is perfect for live streaming. By all means, if you need more channels, go bigger. If you don't need this many channels, go smaller. There's a smaller version, which is the Q502, which gives you five inputs, not eight. Be aware, there is a non-USB version of the Xenix. The USB versions have the silver bars on the side, the non-USB have the black bars on the side. Just be careful of that. If you pick the wrong one up, you'll have to return it. Now this will plug into your PC or Mac, no problem. And if you're looking to plug it into something like an iPhone or an Android device, then you're just gonna need a small adapter. So my second piece of tech on our list is a USB adapter of some kind. The only thing with Apple is that with the lightning ones, you need the lightning adapter. And if you're lucky enough to have a iPad Pro or one of the new iPad Airs using USB-C, they have a USB-C equivalent. It also has a lightning port next to it to actually keep your phone charged. And for some devices, they actually take the charge directly from the device. You need to plug it in so it'll give power to both devices. You don't wanna lose power halfway through your live stream. Now with the iPads that run USB-C, you can get the official Apple one, but I have actually recommended a different one. I've spoken about this before and I've done a review of it, and this is the hyperdrive. The hyperdrive is USB-C to multi-port adapter. You can get lots of different ports there, but the big one is you're getting the USB-C back and the USB to plug the USB mixer in. Now I'd always recommend going for the official adapter unless you know that the adapter you're getting is from a company that is reputable. For example, Hyperdrive, Anchor, and a couple of other companies now registered and recommended by Apple themselves. There are so many dodgy adapters out there in the market now, so to cut out all the hassle, get the original or trusted one, and then you'll know it's gonna work and you can start live streaming straight away. Now, the next thing on the list is a stand to put the mixer on. It sounds mental, but you won't believe how useful this is. It also means that the mixer is right there at your disposal, should you need to make an adjustment. It's not on the floor where you have to bend down, you're off camera, you could kick it by accident, or even worse, spill something on it. This stand I've got and I recommend is lightweight, it easily folds down, and it comes with little flexi straps if you wanna hold something down onto it. Now, this little stand actually has a trick up its sleeve. It also comes with a phone holder and a flexible neck. So what you could do is you could mount the phone onto that and all your live streaming equipment is on one stand. The mixer will still be out of shot. It's awesome and it's nice and simple. Finally, there's a couple of smaller accessories in our beginner's streaming bundle if you want to have a look at them. Things like cables, lighting, or if you wanted to have a separate tripod for your device. Now my beginner's streaming bundle is actually in a link that's in the description box below. I'm gonna throw it up on the screen just for a second. And I am not sponsored by any of the people I've talked about today. Now I'm not here to make you spend thousands of pounds. If you were just to pick up the mixer and the stand, it comes to under 70 pounds. This, in my mind, is really cheap because you can use the mixer as an audio interface if you wanna do recording later on. You could do live streaming, you could go out live gigging with it, and the stand can hold it all in one place with your phone there, ready to go. If you have any questions, then please hit me up in the comments section below. I do like to go through them and answer them as quickly as I can. Now, the only other thing you might wanna consider is a multi-streaming package. If you wanna to stream to more than one place like Facebook and YouTube at the same time, then have a look at this video where we talk about restream .io. And there's a nice little gift in that video if that's something that you're interested in. I hope you found the content of this video useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.